Elites, what's going on? This is me, Captain Vizor Days. We live action. You already know what it is. Here to bring you this Bleach Chapter View this week. Bleach Chapter 606 titled, The Divine Division. Now we see it starts out with Juha and Ichibe still going on with their confrontation, but Ichibe, he goes on to tell Juha, like basically, I told you not to call my name. And you know, I knocked you all the way back and gave you time to repent, but yet you still went ahead and went to come back towards me by impelling yourself with the arrow and he goes on to make a statement saying how he's even though he's aged and he's older he's still basically just immature and just reckless as he always was and i'm thinking to myself like well did he remember juha back when he was younger the old man yama tell him the tales that he fight him before which i doubt you know that he fought him before but he basically recalls him being a certain way back when he was younger but anyway, it cuts down to the Serate. You know, let me rewind it just a little bit more. Before it cuts down to back to the Serate, we see it goes to Ichibe when his eyes is all white. I'm thinking at that point, yeah, he's geared to do something big, like maybe go Bunkai or something, but, you know, that's not the case. So with the Serate, we see someone skipping with the rocks, and you see they're holding some big, like just a big package, like just a whole bunch of equipment wrapped up. And we see it cuts to Uduhara, of course, he has his cane, and he's putting these markings in the ground, and... You hear a voice saying, what, what the hell are you doing out here? Aren't you supposed to be inside getting preparations done? And we see we are accompanied by the violence. Yes, we see it's Love, Hiyori, Lisa, and Hachi. And we see Lisa, you know, it's raining. Lisa has the umbrella. Um, Hiyori has a big sack of whatever equipment, you know, Love has on the hoodie. And we see Hachi has a tiny umbrella. Maybe it's a normal size umbrella, but since he's so big, you know, maybe it's too small. But... Basically, the shocking thing right here is they were discussing about how they were all supposed to meet up with Ichigo and the crew. But yet, Hiyori was asking Uruhara, like, why in the hell did you let them go first? Like, what was up? Like, you know, where's the Catwoman? Like, you let her go up first? And then at that point, that other person that was carrying the equipment was none other than Yorichi's little sister. Now, I'm thinking, like, wait a minute. First, I had to, you know, collect my thoughts, like, the younger reach had a, a sister, but then I said, wait a minute, it, it does make sense now that I, you know, I'm going through the data books, you know, because she is part of a noble family, you know, I, I'm going back through the data books, doing a little bit more research on her, I'm like, wait a minute, is this such a shocker, like, hell, Ukutaki has a lot of brothers and sisters, we see, uh, what's his name, Omeda, he has brothers and sisters, you know, but we, we have never seen Ukutake's brothers and sisters. We've, seen, we've just seen Omega's over, um, brothers and sisters, excuse me. So now I'm thinking, like, okay, maybe this isn't such a shocker. It's more of a shocker that, you know, we've seen Yorichi's little sister at this time. You know, we never thought we'd never see her, it's especially during, you know, these type of events. So anyway, it all came down to it. So Udohar, he basically said the situation changed. That's why he had to let him go up first, you know. And at that point, you know, Yoda Reach, I believe, you know, uh, Yashiro Shihoan. She's the 23rd head of the Shihoan clan. I believe that's what it was. And she was saying, that's messed up. I came all this way. I haven't seen her in a long time. I bought all this equipment for her. So they all agreed to go inside. Udohar said, you know, I have to do it for the Serate, you know. And Hiyori was like, so what, you think they're just expendable? You're just going to send them up so they can just, you know, uh, wear down the enemy, and then we're going to go up there. So it was crazy. They they all went inside, you know, to get these preparations done. Then it cuts back up to the battle. And I like that one panel where it shows Ichibe and Juha, they're clashing. Ichibe with this paintbrush. <laughs> and we see Juha with that classic sword. I hope they make a real replica of that sword because, yes, I will buy it. Um, so the crazy thing is, we got an explanation of what that brush is capable of doing. He goes on to hit Juha with the brush. Juha, he knocks it back. He's like, this is all you're capable of. I mean, even though I noticed your demeanor has changed. I mean, now you're looking so happy because of the fact that you're trying to kill me. So, he goes on to explain. Chibay says, my brush cannot cut flesh, no. But, it can damage the parts of your body or your body itself. Just by the name. At first I'm reading that like, okay, what the hell? But basically he goes on to explain it. Whatever he cuts, the abilities get cut in half of that body. You know, basically how it's the arm, A-R-M, is just A-R. You know, so yeah, it just sound like R. 
You know, I know that sounds crazy in the English language, but that's basically what he does. And he says, even swinging a sword is a chore. All abilities, the muscles is cut in half. And at that point, it was effective because even Juha was looking shocked. We see Ichibe, he slashes Juha straight up, knocks this guy all the way back towards the palace, mind you. You know, back towards, yes, towards the palace, whatever. But he goes back and he hits his back on the edge. Bah, and he goes flying up. I thought that was a little bit funny. Falls down. And uh, at that point, Chibay, he's just sitting there in a sweet-ass pose, you know, with the paintbrush down like this. And he's saying, like, who would ever thought? Juha, Leo to Quincy, you know, now abilities cut in half by the greatest enemies, me the Soul Weaver. And that's when Juha says, does it look like I'm hurting or I'm suffering? He's charging up. You see this ratio around him. It says to be continued. <sighs> now. Yes, there are some things I need to say about this chapter. Overall, Bleach Chapter 606, yes, I did enjoy this chapter. It offered a good amount of things. Yes, we got to see slight story progression. We got to see the return of the visors, the rest of them, except minus one, but I'm going to mention who that is. And then we also got to see a new character, Yorichi's sister. Um, and yeah, we had a little bit of action scenes, and we got an explanation of um, Ichibe's brush. Now, this right here is my concern. Is this going to lead up to a similar repeat of when Aizen took on everyone in the fake Katakura town? Because when the visor showed up, yes, I was surprised. At first, I was, I was like, yes, and surprised. I'm like, you know, it's the visor's hell yeah. But I'm like, wait a minute. I stopped getting hyped. We're excited. I mean, it, these are the visors. We know how Kubo does things with the visors. He just straight punks them. So, when I read they were getting preparations ready, and they were meant, slash, they're still trying to go up there and help. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. The visors trying to lend support against the elite Quincy's and Juha and Hashwath and Uryu. I would say... The wine, but I guess he's just really dead, whatever. What in the hell can the visors do? We see evidently Kubo just doesn't care about it. Look, I mean, look look at Shinji. Shinji, Kensei, Rose. I mean, what the hell? And the one who's missing is Mashiro. Where the hell is Mashiro? Last time we seen Mashiro, it was her, Kensei, and Hisaki. And that's when Kensei had Mashiro attack Asagi during, so uh, uh, Asagi can do his Bunkai training. But the thing is right here, it was really hype when they showed up. They had the element of surprise when they showed up against Aizen, okay, during the fake Katakura town fight. But Aizen was laying them down like that. Yeah, they were taking out the Gillians. And yeah, you know, uh, Rose and Love took on Stark, and Stark dropped two captain-level visors, you know, just to get taken down by Shunsui and Shikai, but whatever, that's a, that's a whole nother, whatever, that's a whole nother topic I just will not bury. But how effective can they be? Yes, we see the Quincy's, they're allergic to the hollow reishi. Maybe they use their hollow powers, all right? We have yet to see Shinji use them since this battle. We have yet to see Kensei use them. We have yet to see Rose use them. Uh, Mashiro used it against Hisagi during the training. Hopefully, one of these visors, Love, Hiyori, Hachi, Lisa, one of them will have the freaking common sense. Well, may maybe Kubo, you know, he has control over all this. He, will, he, he already said he has the story already written out. But hopefully he has it written out to where they do the hollow mask. But even still, it's not going to be that effective. They're free. I, I doubt Hiyori and Lisa has a Bunkai. They are lieutenant level soul reapers who became visors and they are still lieutenant level soul reapers. Yes, I know they're stronger because they got the hollow mask, but I mean, come on now. I mean, it's going to be cool to see my boy love fight, but I think the most effective one out of that group will be Hachi. He will be the most effective one out of that group. But this is how, this is what I uh, caught on to. I'm pretty sure Kubo thought about that, the, the vast power scale. You know, it's no way these violets are matching the power of the Royal Guard. If the these elites in Juha are hanging with the Royal Guards, 
it's no point for the uh, visors to show. They're just going to be in the way. I still feel this way about Ganju and Orihime and Chad. Well, at least Orihime can try to do her, her, you know, her defense and uh, healing. But that equipment he already had, maybe that has something to do with it. Now, we see uh, Udohara is very smart. Maybe he, he told him, hey, bring this equipment. I can whip something up to help you all in this battle. You know, who knows what this extra equipment is with Yoda Richie. And it's good that this is happening because I did think, like, what is Yoda Richie going to do? Maybe she has her hidden Zapato with her and she's going to finally reveal a Shikai or do a Bunkai or whatever. But this will be the second time um, Yoda Richie has some type of equipment in battle. But on to this looking more like a repeat, similar to the whole Ajna Katakura Town thing. It looks like everyone is joining up for this so-called final battle. Some people actually think this is the final battle. I don't think it is. But... If it is, it's pointing to that sign of it to being a repeat. Just how the final battle in Gundam C was very similar. That was like a copy and paste of how it was with Destiny. Mula Fly, the way he protected the Archangel. It was like the same thing that happened in Destiny. I don't want that to happen. Say if all the Royal, uh, not, I'm sorry, not the Royal Guard, the Squad Zero get taken out. Not the Squad Zero down. The Elites get taken out, excuse me. And then they all look at you I like, yeah, let's do this. We got Ichigo, Ganju, Yorichi, her sister Yashiro. We got the Visors. We got, you know, we got it's everybody. Who going to show up next? Halibel, Grimjaw, Fullbringers? Everybody and their grandmother going on to take Juha. And then, of course, yeah, you know, Hashwalk and Uri are going to get in the mix. But what the hell? I mean, you, I, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, how effective are these Visors going to be? The Visors. Going up to that, that's just messing me up. Maybe I read it wrong. Maybe they're going to just lay waste of the Quincy's that's still down there with no powers. Maybe they're going to look for, uh, in the mix, look for Shinji. I'm surprised no one asked about Shinji. Maybe they still think he's alive. I mean, I know he's alive, but maybe they still think like he's doing fine. I mean, what the hell? And you see Eisen dropped them all. Well, not all the virus, but you know what I'm saying. He was just dropping everybody. And I can see Juha, like Ganju, Chad, Hiyori, and Lisa going. I, I'm, I have to see how this is going to play out. And y'all to reach his sister, Yashiro. And not, first, you got a Toshiro, Joshiro, and a, a Yashiro. But anyway, how effective is she going to be? I'm pretty sure she probably has some other tricks. Hell, can she turn into a cat? Whatever. But on to Ichibe and Juha. Uh, Ichibe. So far, he's holding his ground. I was kind of expecting this as good. He gave some, uh, he was landing hits on Juha. Uh, so far, he only took uh, damage from Juha one time with that arrow, that holy arrow. You know, um, so far, you know, Ichiba, he, he's doing his thing. He really is. But like I said, all of this is just to show off what Ichiba can do. I know none of this is not going to kill Juha. If anything, this is going to prove how strong Juha is. His power was cut in half, so Ichiba says. But yeah, we know Juha, he's going to counter. He's going to come back and, and just do something. But, oh man, overall elites, pretty good, smooth, solid chapter. I do like it. But it's just, I hope this is not a sign of a copy and paste repeat of Eisen. You know, everybody all up against uh, Juha, just how everybody was all up against Eisen. I just hope that is not the case. But give me your thoughts, comments, and concerns. Do you think the visors will be effective? Do you think they're headed up there? Do you think they shouldn't even join the battle? Um, how do you think it was? What do you think is gonna happen next week? As far as me, I believe it may continue on with the fight a little bit with Ichibe and Juha, and then it may cut to inside of the um, pillar being lost up to the royal palace with Ichigo and Yoda reaching inside, and maybe they may arrive and they may say to be continued with that. But thanks for watching. Please see y'all next week for Bleach Chapter Six Hundred Seven. Signing out.